The beginning of this cedar chest makeover is to remove the bottom. Sheila's going to see if this is manageable. This is gonna be really great. Take those off and we're gonna um, take these decorative pieces off. Let's get started. Next step is to remove the hardware. There are eight little screws that need to be drilled out and then these big old 1970s handles will be coming out. Handles are off and now Sheila is taking off these extra little wood paneling guys it makes it look a little bit less heavy. All right, the chisel is working. Sheila's about ready to pop that sucker off. Oh, but we're why? not going to do it prematurely. We don't want to break it. We want it to come off. Yeah, don't nicely. get too excited when you start to see some movement. We've learned our lesson. We've done that before. Okay, look how cute. So that came off and now there's a little bit of excess wood that's still kind of glued on. Be very careful. If you don't... We have one more decorative wood thing to come off and then we're gonna work on cleaning up those areas. Our next step is to get this paneling smooth and to fill in kind of all those crevices. So we're using some plastic wood and it has a really cool thing so when it's done being pink that means it's ready to roll and there's the side that we need to do we're gonna have to vacuum those shavings off and then we will apply the putty to that side okay next step is to sand. We've got to get our rotary sander out, get all of that stain off and all of the putty so that we have a smooth surface. This is my least favorite part, but it has to be done and it's going to look really awesome when we're done. We started off with an A grit sandpaper on our rotary sander. And you're just going to watch that carefully and see how fast the original stain and the original um, top comes off. And go nice and slow, do uh, very slow motions with the sander and keep an eye on it. You don't want to go too deep and um, ruin the wood. Okay, now we are using the surf prep sander and we use this for scuff sanding and going around those difficult edges right there. You can't take your rotary sander and get in those little grooves of the piece. And this particular sander is has kind of a little bit of a molding sponge to it so it can really get in there and get into those grooves. We're gonna do the uh, scuff sand over the entire piece to break up that initial shine of the um, original wood. We are ready to get the stain on the top of this cedar chest, the raw wood that we sanded down. We're going to use mineral spirits to prepare the wood for the stain so that the stain will apply evenly. Sheila is just um, beginning to wipe on the TSP. She's just using a foam brush and it says you can use like a rag or a cloth and just wipe it on and so it's easy. It's a good step though. We are going to use the Primer Zinzer Cover Stain Primer Stain Blocker. We're going to use that on our cedar chest now. So everything's taped off. We're going to just do the primer on the base because we're going to stain the top. We've mudded, we've sanded, we've vacuumed, we've wiped. We're ready to go. We are starting the priming process. What do you think? It's pretty smelly. It's like chemically we've got we a opened our windows yeah it's but gonna be great though it's I like this I think it looks good it's gonna help us not get any bleed through because we are going um, white on this so here we are we're ready the entire bottom has been primed 
We've got the edges taped off, so we're ready now for our chalked paint and our gel stain for the top. We're getting ready to stain. We are staining a dark color this time because when we sanded, this big old black line is in the wood on that side and it started showing up over here. So we were gonna do a light color, but we've decided to do General Finishes Java. Sheila's just gonna stir it up and then she's gonna apply it with the craft foam brush. And what do we do when we do stain? gel stain. We wipe it on. We wipe it on and then we wipe it back with a shop towel or a lint-free rag. Okay. So with this gel stain, Sheila's just applying it with a craft brush and you're just going to go over it, make sure everything is evenly applied. Sheila's going in the direction of the wood grain as well. That's a little technique that you'll need to um, use when you do this on your own piece. Once the gel stain has been on, you immediately wipe it off and wipe it back with a shop towel. We are using a lint-free paper towel. You can just pick these up at the hardware store or an auto shop store. And you're gonna go in the direction of the grain of the wood and just evenly wipe off the excess stain. We just finished the step of putting the gel stain on that bottom lid part, the little edging, and we're not wiping it off on this particular step because we didn't sand that to raw wood. Ooh. We have um, let this sit on the top, this gel stain. I love it, and it's been primed. Our next step is to add the new legs to modernize this old 1980s cedar chest. So we have flipped the cedar chest over and what we are going to do is add a completely brand new sheet of wood for the bottom to add more support for the legs. The legs, um, when you add them in, you have to screw in um, the holder things, what are those called? Support systems. And if you do that, it's gonna end up poking through the bottom of our cedar chest. So we're gonna make a nice clean surface to add the new legs. We're just scraping off all these kind of little shavings and old glue remnants. Just make sure we have the flattest surf pos surface possible. We added a whole bunch of liquid nails and now we're going to use our putty knife and just scrape it and then our nice new board right there will be clamped on using those guys. This takes 24 hours to cure, so after this step, we're moving on. The glue on the board has dried, so now the next thing we have to do is take some caulk and we're going to run a bead of caulk along this line so that it seals it and you can't see a gap. When we use the caulk, we want to make sure the label says that it is paintable since we're going to paint it. We're just going to squeeze it 
Then we need to take our finger and we run it along and create a smooth V. Now, if I give you a close up, you can see there is no gap. We are getting ready to drill in the holes for our new legs. Here are the legs. Pick those up at Amazon. And now we're doing it. The legs are being attached now. We're putting the screws in those pilot holes that we drilled. Just a reminder that we drilled those pilot holes so that the wood wouldn't split when we were putting the screws in. So we're gonna get those screwed in really tight so that these legs don't jiggle. Look, so the legs are on. Hopefully we didn't screw it up. Just kidding, we do a good job. Our cedar chest is primed and we are just getting ready to add the linen white. We used the Zinsser cover stain primer on this piece, and now it's time to put the magical paint on. You ready, Sheila? I'm so She's ready. She's serious, she's got her apron this on. This is the funnest part. Yep. So with the chalk paint, we like to do a little bit of water on our brush to get it damp before, and spray a little bit of water in the can as well. This kind of helps us put on a smoother application. Now, for the first coat, you've got to remember, you're not going to have perfect coverage. You're going to think, oh my goodness, this isn't working. So you do light strokes, you go up, and then you don't go back over and overwork it. You just let it dry. So you're going to apply it on and then move on to your next section. So you can see Sheila did that middle section, and now she's going to work on this side. She's going to work into grooves first and then do the top of those panels. Now remember, as you are putting it on, it's not going to cover the entire thing. You might see a little bit of primer underneath and a little bit of the original poking through, but you can always go back and add more paint on the second coat. When this dries, we will take a very, very high grit sandpaper and go over it to make it smooth as well. In between the first coat and the second coat, after the first coat dries, we noticed a couple bumps. And so you can just take your sandpaper Smooth it out and then start on the second coat after you clean off the dust. The last step is to seal the piece. We are adding a Rust-Oleum top coat to this uh, gel stain top and then we will add the protective top coat on the chalk paint as well. Chalk paint has to have a seal. It is not a protected paint. It will easily rub off, and if any water gets on it, it will rub off. So remember, you have to put a top coat on chalk paint. 